this is the book that you guys are going to be reading today. How many have read this so far? Oh, wow. Good for you. All right. So I'm going to tell you. You're still in kindergarten. <laughs> okay, you want to start now? <laughs> no. Okay, so this, well, this is actually the copy that we're going to draw from. Uh, so I want to tell you the real life inspiration behind this book. This was actually inspired by a real life teacher of mine, but it wasn't my real life science teacher. It was my real life gym teacher. Now, I don't know if your teachers are like mine. My teacher was like the meanest teacher in the entire school. He was the kind of teacher who was constantly yelling at us. In gym, he'd be yelling at us to run faster. In the hallway, he'd be yelling at us to stop running. And he was the kind of gym teacher that thought the gym class should happen all the time, which is why he always came to school wearing his gym clothes. Right? He had this sort of blue pair of Adidas track pants with white stripes down the legs. And he had this bright, bright, bright yellow t-shirt that he must have bought when he was a university student. Because that shirt was about two sizes too small for him. Now, it wasn't because the shirt had shrunk. It was because his belly had grown over the years. And he had a bit of a pot belly and the shirt kind of stretched over it. On a really bad days, just the edge of his belly would peek out from under the shirt. And what was really bad was uh, usually in the afternoon, his armpits would get really wet. And behind his back, we all called him Mr. Funkalicious, because he smelled so funky. Now, we were all scared of my gym teacher, and we were scared of him for one reason, and one reason only. That's because he liked to make us play dodgeball. I know most people have your reaction. They like dodgeball, right? <laughs> but at my school, we were scared of dodgeball because my gym teacher liked to play dodgeball against us. And he believed in headshots. Oh. Now, today's dodgeballs are nice and soft and nerdy. Well, back in my day, they were like round bricks, right? Oh. And my gym teacher had a cannon of an arm. He could fire the ball so hard, he'd pick us off in the side of the head and knock us off our feet. So whenever it was time to play dodgeball, we all scream and try to hide under the gym mats. Now, as a kid, I was a really bad dodgeball player, because even as a kid, I wore glasses, and my mom didn't want me to break my glasses, so for gym class, I always took my glasses off and put them off to the side. Well, without my glasses, I can't see a thing. So usually, I was like the first kid knocked out. I'd be stumbling along, somebody would fire the ball at me, i get smacked in the head, I'd be out just like that, right? Or I'd be stumbling along and all my teammates would line up behind me and use me as a human shield, and there'd be a blizzard of dodgeballs coming at me, and I'd be out just like that, right? Well, this one day, I was lucky enough to be on the same team as my gym teacher. And it was one of those days where I could do no wrong. So even though I couldn't see the ball, I was dodging it by accident, right? I'd be stumbling along, somebody would whip the ball at me, I'd stop just at the right minute, the ball would zip past my nose, hit one of my teammates and knock them up, right? <laughs> or a couple of guys would line up behind me and use me as a human shield, and just as they got behind me, I noticed my shoelaces were untied, so I went over to tie my shoes, the ball sailed over my head, ricocheted off the two guys and knocked them out, right? Now, meanwhile, my gym teacher is grabbing the loose dodgeballs and whipping them across the gym and taking out the other team. I can't hear, or I can't see the carnage, but I can hear the whistle of the ball as it flies through the air, the stank of the rubber as it hits a kid in the face, and his poor yelps as he crawls off the gym floor, right? So I just hear this whiz, whap, ow, whiz, whap, ah, whiz, whap. I want my mommy. <laughs> so we get to the end of the dodgeball game and it's down to my gym teacher and me on one side and a big fellow named Jim on the other side. And I remember a dodgeball was rolling toward the middle of the gym floor and both Jim and I went to get it at the same time, but Jim got there first. And I tried to backpedal to get away from him and he just cracks this wide grin, winds up and throws the ball as hard as he can right at my face, right? So I'm looking up, and I can make out this weird purple blur spinning in the air toward my nose. And in a panic, I lift my hands up to protect myself, but it's like everything goes into ultra slow motion, right? It's like, no. Whoa. 
ball comes spinning between my hands, and just as it comes between my hands, I squeeze my hands together and I catch the dodgeball. Now you guys all know what happens when you catch the dodgeball, right? You throw it! Well, before you throw it, the other person goes out, right? So, gym is out, we've cleared up the other side of the gym, we've won the game, except I don't have my glasses on, and I don't know that we've won the game. All I know is that this is dodgeball, and I gotta take someone else out. So I squint really hard, and I make out this big yellow blur off of the side, <laughs> and I wind up and I throw the ball as hard as I could, and I hit my gym teacher in the back of the head. <laughs> so after that, he made me run extra laps, he made me clean up the gym equipment, but he became the inspiration for the character in the Mystery of the Mad Science teacher. Now notice it's not called the Mystery of the Mad Gym Teacher, that's because my gym teacher is still around, and I don't want him to know that I'm making fun of him, so I changed it to protect myself. <laughs>